Are you ready to go? Yeah, because we're getting our chickens right after this. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things, like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is TwoCrazyKetos.com. That's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Do you hear how loud Grayson is right now? It's like he's super do excited. Do you see how long your eyebrow is? I wanna what are you doing? Pull it out. <laughs> what is going on there? They need to be trimmed a little bit. Or curled. You could perm that thing. <laughs> Anyway, Grayson is super loud and he's outside right now because I was cleaning the office. But we're going to do a keto full day of eating today. What are we eating today on this, the day of chickens? What do you mean on the day of chickens? Today we're getting our chickens. I'm wearing a chicken shirt because it's chicken day. I've saved the chicken shirt for chicken day. Well, what better thing to eat on Oh, crap. It's chicken Tuesday. Day is... We're not going to do Taco Tuesday. Oh, man. It's we're Buffalo gonna, Wild Wing we're Day. We're going to eat chicken wings. That seems really inappropriate. I'm going to eat the chicken wings in front of the baby chickens to see this is what's going to happen to you when you stop laying eggs. Oh, my god! Take it a page from Christopher. You're a monster. Man. Look. I'm going to I'm gonna eat the chicken legs, but I won't do it in their presence. Let's go look for our chickens. Um, honey? Yes. I hate to tell you this, but even though the post office website says they're supposed to be delivered today, yeah. looking on here, they are currently still in Cleveland, Ohio. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe they're here and they just don't even know it yet. They haven't turned the airplane mode off of their own little personal tiny chicky cell phones. I'm going to go right to the loading dock and see if I can find somebody to talk to. What's the verdict? No chicky babies yet. However, they took down my phone number so that they could call me as soon as they came. But let me tell you, I was listening. I was listening really hard to be like, do I hear them? Do I hear anything in there? But yeah, so they took my number. At least we will be alerted as soon as they get here. But I don't see the big mail truck. Usually every day around this time is when the big mail truck comes and delivers the day's mail. So it hasn't come yet. So there's still hope. I'm bummed. What's wrong? I really wanted to come home with chicky babies. I'm just going to have to be patient. We waited this long. It'll happen. Rachel is acting <laughs> super depressed. I just want my chickens to come. <laughs> Can I just have my chickens? Well, looking on the website, it still says they're in Cleveland, Ohio, and they may not be here till Thursday. Are you kidding? That's, it says, according to my pet chickens website, they'll come anytime between Tuesday and Thursday. No, I don't want them in transit that long. I want I them know. to come today. Well, it's 930. I just finished editing the Watch Autumn Keto interview video. Yay! While we have a little break in the rain, Anthony and I are going to run a couple of properties. Okay. Also, it looks like I sold our Breville grill, our little like in-house kind of Breville George Foreman. So I'm having the guy meet us at the property I'm cutting. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I just got a phone call from the post office that the chickens are here and Joe is not here. He is working right now. So I do not want those babies staying at the post office a second longer than they need to. So I am on my way to go to the post office and I'm actually going to bring my mom along so that she can, you know, hold them while I'm driving because I don't want them just loose in the car. So I'm super excited. Here we go. 
So it's 11.30 and Anthony and I just finished cutting our two properties. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get rained on. And right as I was finishing, uh, Rachel called me and said the post office called and our chickens are here. So she won't wait for me. She said she was going to get them, but she will not open the box until I get home. So I'm on my way home now and uh, we're going to let out the chickens. All right. I guess it's how it comes off like this. Oh my gracious. Just rip the box. There's living creatures in this. <gasps> oh my gracious. Oh, they're so sweet. Are those the prettiest babies ever? They're all alive, Joe. There's Thank no you, dead Jesus. Ones. Oh, look at this guy's like little smushed. Oh my gracious. Well, let's, let's move them out. I'm gonna put them right into the thing. Wow. Oh my gracious, are they sweet? <gasps> Hello. I feel like this is the stupidest thing we've ever done. I am fairly certain we've done way stupider things. <laughs> way stupider. I mean, not so much that we're getting chickens, it's that we've got seven chickens. Big shout out to my pet chicken. Look at how beautiful and alert these babies are. They packed them really, really well. I mean, on the shipping thing, it said that they were in Connecticut at nine o'clock last night getting shipped out. Yeah. And the fact that they're here this morning, I'm impressed. Yep, they did great. And the post office, I'll give them that. Way to go, USPS. Way to represent. Yeah, not so much that we bought chickens. It's that we've got seven and three of them are gonna be like, behemoths. So it was funny. I didn't have to sign for anything. I just came and picked them up. And the post office guy was like, I cannot believe that you do not have to sign for another living creature. So it's 1245 and we have to go do an interview for the next episode of Keto and Friends. But guess where Rachel is? Let's go get her. So we have to go film the next episode of Keto and Friends. But I'm currently busy right now. So this one does not want to come off my hand. She just keeps traveling around on my hand. Let's see what's in here. I like that you can tell them to drink something and then they just go and drink something. Tabitha does not look very happy. I, Tabitha, sit down. I think we're gonna wait sit. a day before we introduce them. Tabitha, sit. They've had a big day. She doesn't even want to listen. That's how much she's upset. Tabitha, sit. Sit. Good girl. Okay, we have a couple of minutes before we have to go film Keto and Friends, but we put a poll out on Facebook family group today asking like, ask us some questions. Because we're vlogging. So Shelly wants to know. Hey Shelly. Do we ever want to move? I wouldn't mind moving somewhere else within Florida, because I do love Florida, that has some land. I would move tomorrow if I could. <laughs> the only reason that I'm not ready to move right now is the because family's here. I, the family's here. Rachel's mom's here. Her brother's here. The boys are here. At least the boys have indicated they don't want to move anywhere. Right. But personally, I want to go somewhere where I can have a farm. Uh, it doesn't have to be in the middle of nowhere where you have to drive like 50 miles to get to Walmart. But honestly, if I could, I'd have 200 chickens. Kelly wants to know. Hey, Kelly. Uh, what do you do for hair products? Wow. <laughs> so I am the cheapest woman alive, whatever is on sale. Whatever yeah. is on sale, whatever is the cheapest shampoo, the cheapest conditioner. Boy, I wish I had some sort of treatment fancy pants thing. I've noticed over the years, you know what helps my hair? What? Different. I've had fancy pants shampoo that we've gotten on like clearance. I've bought things from beauticians, but I have to change. If I stay with the same product for an extended length of time, my hair starts to get like really wonky. I think the biggest difference we've noticed in her hair is using collagen. That was a game changer Both for me. Collagen powders and just eating more of like, you know, the little nubs off of the bones and bone broth and stuff like that. But incorporating a lot more collagen definitely seemed to make her hair grow. Uh, 
Are your weddings are going to be ready in eight minutes. We need to go get the wings. But it's day one. What does that mean? We have a rule in our house that I don't have to let anybody play with my toy on day one. That's when the kids were seven. <laughs> but it applies to it me as well. Applies. So I took Rachel's car to go get the wings and halfway over here, this popped up. It says, attention, your fuel tank is almost empty. Do you want to find a nearby gas station? Uh, wow, look at how good the quality of this camera is. Because all of this fingerprint nonsense does not show up when I'm just looking at it. Let's see what happens. Find. Oh, wow. It gives me a whole list of all the gas stations in the area. I'm trying to figure out what's more important. Go pick up the wings or go get gas in the car. It does say we can get 30 miles on what's left. Maybe we'll get the wings and then get gas. Okay, we have our wings. They're in the air fryer. Rachel likes them really crispy, so we always bring them home and then stick them in there for about 10 minutes to really get them crispy. And uh, speaking of who, uh, guess where she's at? She's out in the garage with those chickens still. And uh, I am having a cup of coffee with one tablespoon of butter, and that's just to up my fat content. We're having wings, which is very high in protein. And we're in the middle of doing like the modified version of deeper state keto. So we're trying to have between 75 to 80% fat. And again, the wings are super high in protein. So we can't even have as many wings as normal. Uh, but I'm gonna answer another question from our uh, poll on Facebook. And let's see, Danielle wrote, if you can have only one keto sweet in the house, what would it be? I guess it depends on what you define as a sweet. As far as a treat, if there was only one thing, I would probably stick with the perfect keto bars. And if you had to narrow it down to a specific flavor, it would probably be the birthday cake ones. They're just my go-to when I want something that's a little sweet, that's like a bar kind of thing that at least I'm getting some kind of nutritional benefit from. Uh, if I don't want it to be sweet, it would usually be the keto brick. But that's probably the sweet that I would have if I could only have one. We'll have to ask Rachel when we pull her in. I have a feeling she's gonna say Chalk Zero. Are you ready? I'm so ready. Do you wanna eat? I, I don't want them to watch. Why not? I don't want them to see what is happening. We're having burgers today, guys. Burgers. Okay, so answering a question on Facebook. Yes. Danielle wants hey, Danielle. to know if you can only have one keto sweet in the house. One. One. What would it be? One keto sweet. My answer was perfect keto bars, and if you had to nail it down to a flavor, it would be birthday cake flavor. Wow. Okay. So I'm gonna go with the peanut butter and jelly nut butter from Perfect Keto. Wow. I thought you were gonna say Chalk Zero. Oh, I totally forgot about Chalk Zero. <laughs> okay. So the peanut butter and jelly. From, I only have one. Oh, man. Okay, then I'm going to have to go with the milk chocolate peanut butter cups from Chalk Zero. Okay, you're ready to eat, like, some chicken wings? I feel very guilty. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Okay, so here's what we've got. Obviously, like I said, we're eating a lot less protein, which means a lot less wings. So I've got 13 wings. Two ounces of the blue cheese dressing and then an extra tablespoon of mayonnaise, which ups the fat. Mm -hmm. Then I've got three keto brick pucks. Looks like I've got three keto brick pucks also, but I think I have less wings. Do I have less wings? You have three, four, ten wings. Five, six, ten wings. Ten wings. And then I also have a couple tablespoons of butter coming to me. And uh, you have the same thing with the mayonnaise in there. Mm -hmm. So new macros for the week. So the way this is working is every week our calories go down just a little bit. Like digging in. 40 to 50 calories. And then the fat goes down, but the protein goes up. And okay. what we're also doing is, so we're doing 20 total carbs, but whatever carbs we don't eat for the day can be added to protein. Okay, so for my macros for this week are gonna be 1,955 calories, 97 grams of protein, 20 grams of total carbs, 165 grams of fat. This meal, 1,926 calories, wow. 117 grams of protein. So I'm 20 grams in protein over my limit, but we're only doing seven carbs. All of the carbs are coming from the blue cheese dressing and the keto brick. 
So that's where the carbs are coming from. They're happy carbs. Which allows me to have 13 more grams of protein, which brings me up to 110 grams of protein. So now I'm only actually about seven grams of protein over. I'm good with that. Because even Robert says within five or so, you're good. Yeah. Um, and then 152 grams of fat is my meal. For Rachel, this week, uh, 1,612 calories per day. Keep going down. 73 grams of protein. So you went up in protein. Okay. 20 total carbs, 138 grams of fat. This meal, 1,600 calories. 93 grams of protein. So she's 20 grams of protein over. Mm -hmm. Seven total carbohydrates, which means now she's got 13 more to add on to the protein. 129 grams of fat. So she's about five grams in protein over our goal. So overall for wings, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy. Obviously like we would normally be eating like 20 wings, but much less fat. So overall pretty good. Got another question for you from our poll. Let's see. Danielle wants to know, mm -hmm. is there a new pet peeve that you guys have discovered about each other since being in lockdown? Wow. So we are working very hard and very close together. Well, I mean, we are working a lot, but I'm saying like, I feel like we're working really hard at just letting things go. You've got to pick your battles in quarantine, right? Because if you let everything get to you, we would already be divorced. You're not answering the question. Is there, I, I have a pet peeve that I've discovered. Oh, okay. What is it? So my pet peeve is Rachel seems to always pick the time when I am editing a video to start vacuuming around me and now I can't hear the video. That is a true story. That is an absolutely <laughs> true story. Okay, I know what my pet peeve is. Okay. And this is kind of like for everyone in the house because I feel like all of the kids, all of the guys are very guilty of this. Leaving the back patio sliding glass door open. Not so big of a deal for um, temperature change even because it's hot inside and it's hot outside. Right. But what happens is mosquitoes get in and I am so susceptible to mosquitoes like they bite the tar out of me it seems like nobody else is affected except for me but when you leave that door open it's not it's not good two things about that number one it does irritate me too but for me it's the temperature thing because it's my office and my office already has a flat roof so um, that room is really, really hot. That's why it's got a window AC in it. It's just for like the latter part of the day when the sun is beaming on that room. We're actually thinking about getting a solar pool heater and then putting the panels on there because maybe that would take some of the heat off of beaming on the roof. But you do it too. I know, we all do it, even you do it, especially when you're cooking outside and there's an extra refrigerator. So you're in and out and you, like if I'm going out with the food to the grill, it's very difficult to close the door. So you gotta put it down and then close it. Also, Tabitha knows how to open the door. Yeah, so, so if you leave it even a smidge. Or don't lock it because she knows, look, she knows we're talking about it. So she knows how to take her snout and she can reach it and push the yep. door open. So if you go outside, she can't open it coming in. She can only open it going out. But it's enough. But it's enough. And it's so, enough. yeah, so she likes to open up the door on her own. Well, I figured instead of shooting into the kitchen, we can shoot the other way. Instead of seeing my dirty dishes, you can see my dirty laundry. Nah. Well, it's not, it's not dirty. It's clean, just not folded. It's clean, just unfolded. Yeah. Okay, so we got some more questions. Uh, Jesse actually has hey, Jesse. a few of them. Okay. So the first one is, what is Rachel shipping all the time? Comic books and comic related figures, like action figures and toys. Pop figures. So Rachel's brother has an eBay comic book store. And so Rachel does all the shipping for that. So he lives close to us. He books everything, puts it into like a bag, brings it over here when Rachel has to pack it up, put the label on and bring it to the post office. I absolutely love it because there's so many things in my life that I don't know when I'm done. Like right. when have you done enough for the day? But there's a set amount in shipping and when you finish the last package, you're done. So there's this sense of completion that makes me feel very satisfied. Until he sneaks in at three o'clock in the morning with more that we don't know about. Right. <laughs> but it's a new day. But if you do like comic books, things like that, we'll leave a link for it down below because he's got some really good deals on stuff. Cheap. Cheap pop figures if you like collectibles, things like that. Some cheap comic books, stuff like that. Okay, so number two, knowing what you know now would you have raised your children on a keto lifestyle? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
if we would have started keto when the kids were 10, like when we first got married, they wouldn't have had a choice, in my opinion. I would have just been like, this is what we're eating. You know, you're under my roof. Obviously, when we found it, they were all older. I mean, Caleb was 17. But... You sound so, like, kind of angry about it, but I, I think that it's actually a better quality of food. So it's not a case of, boy, I'm robbing you from getting to eat all of these things, like, hot pockets and lunchables and low co- like low quality food i actually think it would have been a better childhood for i think for them. about all of the garbage that we used to give our kids and like obviously you know better you do better right but there's definitely some regrets now looking back at like wow did we cause them to be too hyper sometimes because we were yeah. giving them even if we weren't giving them sugar we were giving them like Lots of Raymond noodles and stuff like that. Very stuff that become sugar that we didn't know about. Yeah. Number three, what is your what is each of your biggest pet peeves about the other one that you have learned to accept, even though it drives you crazy? She's like, for example, my man friend, aka boyfriend, is always late. He'll be late to his own funeral, and it drives me crazy, but I have accepted it. Okay, I'm going first. Okay. So for me, it is, we'll get, we'll have to go somewhere. Rachel will say like, how do I look? And I'm sure this is not just Rachel. It's a lot of ladies. But so I'll tell her, I think you look incredible. And she's like, okay, I'm ready. I just have to go to the bathroom. She'll go to the bathroom, come back out. And now she's wearing different clothes and saying, well, what about this? I'm like, I liked what you were wearing before. Right. That's probably my biggest pet peeve. The constant changing. Even though I like what she's wearing, she's like, no, I don't trust what you're saying. (laughs) I guess that is kind of like exhibiting untrust. Sorry about that. Um, Definitely my personality type is I want to know what is about to happen. I already know it's coming. (laughs) I want to know like, hey, Joe, what are we doing tomorrow? He knows I want to know. His answer is, I don't know, we'll see, I'm not sure, and I can't stand that. I am definitely, definitely, definitely a, like, we'll see how it goes, fly by the seat of my pants kind of person. I'm the kind of person that that will wake up at four in the morning and be like, hey, let's go to Universal. uh, Rachel needs to plan that, like, a week in advance. Yeah. Rachel said to me, like, what are we eating for lunch today? I don't know, whatever I feel like making when it's lunchtime. She's like, no, 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 I want to know now. I want to know what time. I want to know what we're eating. (laughs) And the, the thing that kind of partners with that is if you tell me we've got 10 chores, we're going to do this and this and this. I'm fine with it. But if you tell me we're having nine chores and then add a, a one later, I, it's still 10, but it dri- that drives me crazy. Like, tell me everything, but then don't add. Right. I'd rather have 20 things than to have 15 things and then you add a 16th thing. You want to do another one? Yeah. Okay. Um, Beth wants to know. Hey, Beth. Not Miss Beth. Okay. In a video, someone asked you how you guys met and you ended up relocating to Florida. You answered how you met, but I don't recall seeing why you relocated. Okay, well, I didn't... Well, I'm from New York and I got married to my first wife and immediately moved to Florida just because Florida is so much cheaper. I lived on Long Island, very, very expensive to live. My parents were both from Florida, so my grandfather lived in Florida at the time. My aunt lived here. So, you know, for me, it was just, it was much cheaper to live and I wanted to live down here, but I've been here for what, 25 years now, 24 years now. So I guess 25 years. feels like home. It feels like home at this point. I mean, my mom right now is in the middle of selling her house, which there's a little bit of sadness because I grew up in that house and she's had that house for 47 years. But she doesn't need to hold on to her house for you though. No, no. (laughs) Now, what about you? Because you left Florida. So I'm a seventh generation Floridian. So yeah, I'm definitely a Florida girl. I actually um, started working for the Washington Post in Washington, D.C. and met my first husband there in that Northern Virginia area. We got married and I lived, continued living there. And then he actually got a job after Caleb was born back down here in Florida. And it was a super duper answer to prayer for me because I definitely wanted to have, you know, Caleb raised around, you know, family. family. 
So, uh, yeah. So that's how I got back to Florida. Family is very important to us, especially because we're both from smaller families. Yeah. So One like, sibling each. Yeah. Family is very important. You know, we're kind of like family does for family. So, you know, if we need something, her mom will drop everything and join us. Tabitha's it. like family? Or Tabitha. Tabitha will help as well. Right, baby? Tabitha is going through a little bit of jealousy phase right now because of the She chickens. hears me bragging on a girl being a good girl and it's like, wait a minute, I'm not out there. But we, I think we definitely need to wait a day for her to get to meet the chickens face to face. Yeah. <gasps> ice cream. You scream. We all scream for ice cream. Okay, Krista asks. Hey, Krista. What are your favorite qualities in one another? That's a cute question. I like that question. I'm going to let you go first because i got to think about it for a while. you got to think about it. Well, there's a lot of them. Oh, okay. I like that response. Um, well, there's a lot of them for you, too. I definitely like that you're a hard worker. I admire that. I, okay. I'm a hard worker, so I don't think i got to handle a lazy person. Um, I like that you are a quick learner because I'm not always a quick learner and I feel like you are just lightning speed ahead that way and you definitely are a blessing because you are such a quick learner. And I admire your inventive spirit. Like you are able to create things and I just think that's, that's really, good really to cool. Know. Of course, then that's probably why you come to me and be like, hey, I need a chicken coop with a self water, an electric fence, an automatic door, and you have to build this all in 24 hours. You're, he's a problem solver. <laughs> You're a problem solver. I, I just love that. And I can remember giving you really small tasks when we first met, and you were just like, okay. And I was amazed. I mean, when you would solve a problem, I was so not used to having problems solved that it was just it was just amazing. I just thought so about So now my expectation level is very high. I just thought about another one of your pet peeves for me. Okay. And because you're talking about me being a problem solver, but in my act of solving the problem. Yeah. Like for example, let's say I have to build a shed, which yeah. I've done. Mm -hmm. And I run into a problem. Or let's say I'm renovating a room and you tear down a wall and uh-oh, anybody who's in construction knows when you tear down a wall, the project just got twice yep. as long because there's a problem hiding behind the wall that didn't Always. know about. My answer to this, my way to figure out how to fix this problem is sit down, stare at the wall, and let me think. And I cannot and give you time Rachel for that. Rachel wants to have input. Yes. And my Not mom helpful. was the same way. My mom would be like, well, what about this? And I'm like, just leave me alone. I can't do that. I will figure out how to do this if you just allow me to concentrate on the problem in my mind while staring at the blank wall. Yeah, but I need to hover. And that irritates you. I have to hover, though. I need it's to. It's a good thing, but I definitely know that like that is something hard to deal with because, yeah, when I have to figure out a problem, I do don't want to be bothered by anybody and everybody wants to give me input and I don't want anybody's input. So that can definitely be annoying to a lot of people. Yeah, because I just want to discuss the giant hole in the wall. <laughs> and like and like what is and then I want to take it down a hypothetical road that it probably will never go down of like what's going to happen now as a result of this giant hole. Okay, let's get back to good qualities. Okay. So, number 1, Rachel always is trying to make me laugh. She's always trying to put me in a good mood no matter what kind of a bad mood I'm in. She's always finding the positive side of things. I so, so I love that. She's always trying to make me laugh, even though I'm usually laughing on the inside. Sometimes I'm not laughing on the outside and she wants to always get me to like just completely belly laugh. And I like that about her. Thank you. She's probably the hardest... If not the hardest, definitely one of the hardest working women I've ever met in my life. The only person I could probably say Who's better than is me? harder working or as hard of working as Rachel would be my mom. Yes, that's true. And but other than that, like she is definitely one of the hardest working women that I've ever met. I mean, she does so many jobs and even in the middle of those jobs is always like, What else can I do? Oh. Well, I like being in listed in the company with your mother. <laughs> Um, what else? She has got a very, very deep spiritual life huh. and really relies on God. 
And so when I'm going through something and going like, I don't know if it's possible, she's always the person to kind of turn me back to God and be like, hey, like, let's remember who our source really is. And so Aww. I really like that about her. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things, but... Well, you're getting some lovin's later. Okay, end this vlog right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is just about night-night time. It's just about seven o'clock and I think it's amazing that they're just sort of finding their little rent-a-coop thing and they're going under what I guess is their little mama hen to go to bed tonight. They have just been a delight. I've had so much fun playing with them. I definitely have a neck ache from leaning over this tub because I cannot get enough, but I just really look forward to getting to know these guys better. They have just already been such a joy and a delight. And I'm really, really thankful that they arrived here safely. And now it's just their job to grow. You guys got to grow. Hey. What? Do you know what the distance is from Earth to the sun? What? Three CVS receipts. <laughs> this is one item. One item purchased at CVS. One one item. I know it's a prescription to top it off. It's it's a sweater. It's a scarf. <clears throat> Hello. This is my CVS purchase. You want to do a couple more of these before we wrap this up? Yes, please. Okay. Sel Marie wants to know what are some so-called keto ingredients that should be avoided? Well, hello, Sel Marie. Um, a keto ingredient that should be avoided. Uh, well, we'll start off with some keto products. Most of the keto breads. Yes. I, I hate to say that. I hate to burst people's bubbles. But if the keto bread slash tortilla has wheat in it, get rid of it. Okay? Yeah. Don't eat that. I know it's like, oh my gosh, I want bread. If you want keto bread, you got to stick to the ones like from Fox Hill Kitchens or Make Your Own Words, almond flour, coconut flour, that kind of Not stuff. Not because we don't want you to have it. It's just that it's going to derail your progress, and that is going to be super frustrating. It's wheat, and wheat eat leads to inflammation. And yeah. And that's the whole point of keto is to get rid of the inflammation. I think for me, the, the product for me that kind of got us started on product reviews in the first place was avocado mayo from some of the big companies like Kraft and Hellman's, like take a look on the back. It says that it's avocado mayonnaise. They've got a special green label that's making you think you're paying extra money for a really responsible product. And you'll see there's a mixture of other oils in with that avocado mayo. Yeah. So yeah, that kind of leads into some of the ingredients. So keto ingredients that should be avoided, any kind of processed seed oils. So, Things like canola oil, corn oil, you know, um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head now that I, you know, like, we're just kind of sitting here, peanut oil, like most of those kind of oils, they're all going to lead to inflammation. When you're looking at fats, you want to be having things like animal fats, especially lard, tallow, bacon grease. Uh, you want butter, you know, ghee. You know, olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, those are where you want your fats to come from. And you're really going to feel the difference when you eat something, like we used to say when we'd eat Winn-Dixie wings that are not fried in good oil, the next day we we had joint pain, we had a lot of inflammation, I feel like we retained double the water than we normally did. It just made you feel wonky for more than a day or so even. Yeah, so technically... Those oils that you're gonna find in like the cheap mayonnaises, they are keto, keto, but they're not good for you overall for your health. So that's something I would avoid. Uh, maltitol, yes. Sorbitol, technically sugar alcohols will spike your blood sugar, will cause insulin rises. What are you picking off of me? Um, it says you're separating the front casing from the rear case. Oh, I put a new case on your phone. That's Thank what you that's very from. much. <laughs> so, so yeah, sorbitol, maltitol, all of that stuff. Uh, IMO fiber, isomaltol oleosaccharides. Who say that fast three times? And then when you do look at keto products, just start to learn your fibers. Mm -hmm. You know, like and and be suspect with thing. If you see a product that is like ninety five percent of the carbs are coming from fiber, and then you don't see any sweeteners within the ingredients label they're probably using some form of an IMO fiber. Right. 
to sweeten it too. Yeah. Lucy wrote, Hey Lucy. Now that there's an end in sight for safer at home, what would be your dream vacation destination? First of all, isn't it just nice to entertain the thought that life can go back to before quarantine? Like that that's that's a nice thought. I like that. That's a vacation thought right there. Uh-huh. Um for me, I have always wanted to go to Ireland, to England, and to South Korea because we're super Korean drama fans. <laughs> Well, I, I wasn't thinking, I guess, dream vacation. We are going on a cruise next year. That's for a the huge keto dream cruise, vacation. And Rachel's never been on a cruise, so I'm definitely excited about that. I'm taking dream of me now. Just the fact of everything ending, this is going to sound really... Aside from the fact that we want to go to Universal, like the day they open Universal, we want to go. I mean, that's not a vacation, but it's, your dream it's vacation? fun for us. But here, this is going to sound really bad. Coming out of quarantine, okay. if I could do anything right now, it would be go camping. <laughs> really? That's your dream. I would love to go camping right now. So Where? yes, we're in isolation anywhere. 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 Like we have a friend around the corner who has a pop-up camper and we were thinking about buying one and he said I could borrow his to try his out. I would go borrow his pop-up camper right now and go camping for a week. So even though we've been in isolation, I would my vacation would, would be, be an isolating vacation. More isolation. What state would you take that camper to? I know you're saying anywhere, but like you can get in and go. Oh, if I could go camping anywhere, it would probably be like Tennessee or something like that. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful there. You want to do one more? One more, please. One more before we close this out. Danielle wants to know. Yes. She said, "Tell me a positive part about the lockdown." Definitely, hands down for me, it has been the time that I've gotten to spend with my adult children because there's no way unless they're forced to, to be home this much that they would be home this much. They're out and, you know, they're adults and they, ha they have lives and jobs and all of these things. And this has forced us to, I feel like go Amish almost, right? Everybody's I would, home. I would have to echo that. I mean, it's funny. I've always said... I don't have necessarily have to be doing something with the kids, but it's just knowing that they're home, even when they were younger. It's like, right? Just hearing that noise in the background. I feel that way about Kid Grayson, noise. right? Like, Rachel's like, what about Grayson? I just like hearing him. Even if I'm not in the same room, when when you hear his talking and his chatter kids, and his little kids things. playing. It's the same thing with the kids. Even though they're adult, there's something about just... Laying in bed watching a movie with Rachel hearing and them hearing laugh. them laughing in the other room. It's been really nice. Along with that, definitely something that's positive that has come out of this is I've learned new skills. I've learned how to do new things on the computer because yes. we had to shift church to being online. And I very quickly had to learn how to do a lot of green screen work, how to edit things faster, how to become better at certain types of sound editing and stuff. So... I've improved my skills on certain things that I never knew I knew how to do. Yeah, and I think that through, you know, doing online church, we've been able to reach a lot more families in states we never would have reached before. I mean, unless you came to Parkland, Florida, right. you weren't coming to our church. And this way we got to share kids' church with people all over the place, yeah. which is kind of awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that's going to be the end of today's vlog. I still have my three keto brick pucks left, but I got full off of my wings. Did you eat all yours yet? I didn't eat all my wings. Oh, I that's still right. have a you couple left wings. Some wings left. Can but, you believe that? Hey, I like that because when we only eat one meal, we tend to want to graze, especially when we eat earlier and we ate at like 3 4 o'clock. Yeah. So I think it is what? It's about 6 45. We'll go finish up our food and. Maybe we'll go watch another Mission Impossible movie. Dun, and, dun, and we have the dun, Keto dun, Chow dun, live stream dun, tonight. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Make sure you guys check out our live stream on Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be a hoedown on Thursday. Uh, we have a hoedown this week. And also, all of these other questions, we'll try to answer them in a future vlog. So make sure that. if you have any, Keep leave them up. down below or go find the post on our Facebook family You guys group. are way more creative than us. I love these questions. They're awesome. Please do us a favor. Hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.